What if the main character of Demon Slayer, Tanjiro Kamado, was born from an unexpected relationship between man and monster? How crazy would that be? Now, for this to happen, we have to ask the question. How did Kamado Tanjiro and Lady Tamayo meet and become lovers? Well, in this alternate timeline, Tanjiro Kamado and Lady Tamayo's fate were intricately intertwined by a certain man called Yoriichi Tsugikuni. On a serene night during one of Tanjiro's journeys to sell charcoal under the radiant full moon, he performed the sacred dance known as Hinokami Kagura. Nearby, Lady Tamayo, recognizing the dance as the breathtaking sword art of the man who once saved her from Muzan's control, became captivated. Their chance encounter sparked a fiery connection, and the rest was history. The birth of the first Kamado family heir marked a pivotal moment, altering the course of Tanjiro's fate. With Lady Tamayo as his mother, the tragic family massacre by Muzan was avoided, which resulted in reshaping Tanjiro's destiny. Thanks to Tamayo's medical expertise, Tanjiro's life extended beyond the age of 25, allowing him to impart the Hinokami. Kagura to Tanjiro. Born as a unique hybrid, Tanjiro discovered his blood demon art early on, capable of surviving on both human blood and food. As he matured, Tanjiro honed his demon abilities, driven by Tamayo's imparted knowledge and a deep-seated hatred for Muzan. Additionally, guided by his father's legacy, Tanjiro effortlessly mastered the forms of Hinokami Kagura. Unburdened by human limitations, he dedicated himself to avenging Tamayo's lost family and ending Muzan's reign of terror. The story unfolds as Tanjiro, armed with both demon and human strength, sets out to fulfill his destiny. At this point, I'm sure you're curious if Tanjiro could stand under the sun. Well, as it turns out, being half-demon, Tanjiro also bears the same weakness as the other demons. So yeah, long story short, Tanjiro cannot set foot in the sun without any protection. With that clarified, let's shift our focus to Tanjiro's journey. As he sets out to destroy Muzan, Tanjiro continuously evolves, gaining experience in fighting other demons. However, this is where things become super interesting. On one fateful day, as Tanjiro travels across the snowy mountains, he stumbles upon the ramp smell of blood. With all his senses heightened, Tanjiro rushes to the scene and finds a traumatizing scene. Several dead bodies lay mangled and tortured mercilessly in front of him. This would be his first encounter with human death. Moments later, Giyu Tomioka, the water Hashira, arrives only to find Tanjiro staring at the lifeless bodies in front of him. As he regains his composure, Tanjiro introduces himself to Giyu and shares his origin. Tanjiro, being an honest individual, does not hide his heritage and discloses the fact that he is born from the unnatural love between a human and a demon. Now, we all know Giyu is not one to trust others immediately. So naturally, Giyu draws his sword and engages Tanjiro in combat. With swift and precise strokes, Tanjiro is caught off guard, suffering significant damage to his body. You see, even though he's experienced in fighting demons and is the user of the Hinokami Kagura, or in this case, the sun breathing technique, Tanjiro lacks one important thing. He lacks experience in dealing with people who use swords and other breathing techniques. So even though he has mastered the forms of the first breathing technique, Technique, he has never been able to use it against an intelligent opponent who knows how to fight back properly. After being backed into a corner, Tanjiro realizes that he has to go on the offensive, or else he will lose his life. With that said, he gradually pushes Giyu back to the point where the water Hashira is shocked to witness these turn of events. Finally, as the snow clears away after a long, hard-fought battle, Tanjiro falls to his knees. Still in shock at what happened, Giyu asks Tanjiro again who he is and what he is up to. Tanjiro answers, looking Giyu dead in the eyes, stating that his goal is to kill Mu on, and that he is the son of Kamado Tanjiro and Lady Tamayo. This serves as the beginning of Tanjiro's journey toward the path of becoming a demon slayer and his unwavering resolve arc. As they settled their differences, Tanjiro accompanied Giyu on his travels, despite the water Hashira's objections to this idea. It's at this point that Giyu fully determines that the boy who rudely tagged along on his journey was not lying. During their expedition, Giyu witnessed Tanjiro healing his wounds like a demon, hunting demons like a demon slayer, and eating human foods like a normal human. After after all this, Giyu decides to bring Tanjiro along to meet the other Hashiras. Essentially, in this alternate timeline, we will be skipping many arcs and proceeding to when Tanjiro finally meets the other Hashiras. During this moment, as Tanjiro introduces himself to Kagaya Ubuyashiki and the other Hashiras, he is met with the same hostility that Nezuko was given in the original story. But this time, Tanjiro calmly explains to them his situation as well as his relation to Muzan. Without holding anything back, Tanjiro reveals everything he knows about the Demon King, which Ubuyashiki confirms to be true. After gaining their trust, Tanjiro would then go on to become part of the Demon Slayer Corp and complete missions along the way. However, the level of difficulty that Tanjiro would face in his missions would be significantly lower. At this point in Tanjiro's life, he has become a reliable ally for the Demon Slayer Corp. With his assistance in the Entertainment District arc, Tanjiro quickly identifies their enemies, and battle swiftly envelops the district. With enhanced speed, strength, and durability, Tanjiro matches Uzui's performance during their battle with the Upper Moon, Six Daki, and Yutaro. 
As the battle intensifies, Tanjiro reveals an ace up his sleeve. Besides the radical buffs he obtains from his demon side, Tanjiro can also use blood demon art, a high level skill possessed only by certain demons. Tanjiro calls his skill the blood of the Crimson King. Yeah, I know it sounds sick, right? The reason why he can use blood demon art despite not consuming human blood is that his mother received Muzan's blood, which he conveniently possessed while being conceived. So yeah, it's not random. There's a reason for it. The abilities of this blood demon art are simple yet deadly. Upon activation, Tanjiro quickly gathers his blood into 30 dense orbs the size of a coin and then hurls them toward his enemies at breakneck speed. Additionally, Tanjiro can control these blood orbs as he pleases, changing directions on a whim, making it hard to predict. Not to mention that these orbs can pierce through anything they come into contact with, much like a bullet. During this time, Tanjiro cannot do anything else but control the orbs. Thus, he stays in the back lines, continuously attacking his opponents while his allies deliver the final blow. Long story short, as the dust settles and the battle reaches its final moments, Tanjiro and his ragtag crew emerge victorious, much like the original plot intended. But this time, the damage they suffer is greatly reduced, and Uzui does not lose his arm as he continues to be a demon slayer. Skipping straight to the swordsmith village art, Tanjiro becomes a significant asset in the fight against Han, Tengu, and Gyoko. We all know that it's at this point in the story where Muichiro and Mitsuri make contact with Tanjiro and unlock their demon slayer marks. Well, all of this will still happen the way it's supposed to, but the only difference is that Han Tengu will not make it until sunrise. In this alternate timeline, Nezuko will not be present at all. But Tanjiro's skills and abilities will be more than enough to defeat Han Tengu and save the village from Gyoko's peculiar fish minions. As Tanjiro, Genya, and Mitsuri gather to fight against Han Tengu and his emotions, their battle is short-lived as Tanjiro quickly disposes of the original body before Zohakuten can manifest. For those unfamiliar, Zohakuten is Han Tengu's final form that creates and controls dragon-like roots. Meanwhile, Muchiro's fight against Yoko would still unfold exactly as it should without any changes. Although their victories are still assured, much like the original plot, the significant difference lies in the fact that a demon capable of conquering the sun will never exist in this timeline. To wrap up this part of the story, Han Tengu and Gyoko lose their battle against the Demon Slayer Corp, and the swordsmiths evacuate the area as their location has been compromised, leaving them vulnerable to another surprise attack. That's when we find ourselves in the Hashira training arc. Tanjiro undergoes proper training under the Hashira's supervision. Utilizing their knowledge, the Hashira's collaborate to create a training regimen that refines Tanjiro's demon abilities, hones his breathing skills, and perfects his sword technique. After five months of rigorous training and self-improvement, Tanjiro emerges as a new demon man, seamlessly integrating his demon abilities, the sun breathing technique, and the tips and tricks he learned from the Hashiras. He becomes a pillar of strength and a beacon of hope for the Demon Slayer Corps. Moreover, this encounter between Tanjiro and the other Hashiras serves as a wake-up call for the entire organization. It becomes evident that not all demons are irredeemable, and some could be capable of coexistence. With this train of thought rooted in their minds, the organization begins to reconsider their stance against their enemies. Tanjiro's existence becomes living proof that a harmonious relationship between man and demon is not impossible. However, a final battle still looms on the horizon. During the final battle arc in the original plot, we witness Lady Tamayo and Shinobu working together to create a drug to counter Muzan. This collaboration was triggered by Nezuko, acting as the catalyst for the Demon Slayer Corps and Lady Tamayo to unite. But in this alternate timeline, Nezuko does not exist. The reason behind Lady Tamayo's allegiance with the Demon Slayers stems from her realization that letting her son fight her battles and carry her burden is wrong. Without informing Tanjiro and her husband Tanjiro, Lady Tamayo secretly collaborates with Ubu Yashiki and Shinobu to finally put an end to Muzan's reign of terror. Following the original plot, Ubu Yashiki uses himself as bait for Muzan, and Tamayo sacrifices herself to ensure Muzan ingests the poison she and Shinobu develop. As these events unfold, the Hashiras and Tanjiro rush to Ubu Yashiki's mansion. There, Tanjiro witnesses the Kagaya mansion on fire, and his mother is slowly consumed by Muzan. Consumed by rage, the Demon Slayers fall into Muzan's trap. As they enter the Infinity Castle, the Hashiras are split up, following the same pattern as in the original plot. However, this time, Tanjiro is consumed with rage due to his mother's death. Unleashing all his power, Tanjiro swiftly eliminates every demon that comes for them. Alongside Giyu, he confronts Akaza without uttering a word. Moments later, Tanjiro and Giyu emerge victorious against Akaza. On the other hand, the Hashiras meet the same fate they originally had during the Infinity Castle arc, meaning some of them will die. Tanjiro's sole focus is on eliminating Muzan himself. After defeating Nakame, 
Tanjiro finally lays eyes on his primary target. With the help of the remaining Hashiras, Tanjiro gives it his all, utilizing every move and trick he learned during his journey. Witnessing Tanjiro's perfectly honed sun breathing technique, Muzan is reminded of his dark past and becomes even more desperate to escape. Ultimately, as Lady Tamayo's toxins significantly weaken Muzan, Tanjiro deals great damage to the Demon King's so-called invincible body. However, don't forget that this is the great Demon King Muzan. He's not going to go down that easy. Muzan retaliates, transforming to his ultimate demon form. He launches a barrage of whips coming from his back, shocking Tanjiro. In order to counter, Tanjiro is forced to use his blood demon art, releasing multiple blood orbs. With each whip, Muzan releases is countered by one of Tanjiro's orbs. At this moment, it is a standstill, with neither having the edge over the other. Both of them take minor damage, but since they are both demons, they have the ability to regenerate. Now this is where the MC's plot armor comes into play! With all of his experience and a better control of his blood demon art, Tanjiro is able to constantly move while controlling his orbs. In a crucial moment, Tanjiro Tanjiro was able to slip past his whips and unleash all the forms of sun breathing, giving the Demon King a fatal wound. Muzan, with his quick reflexes, leaps back, but Tanjiro said, You aren't going anywhere! He does a flash step, appearing right in front of Muzan, continuing his barrage of sun breathing. Cutting off all his limbs and standing over Muzan's dying body, Tanjiro makes it clear that this is the end. With a swift stroke, Tanjiro brings an end to Muzan's life once and for all. After suffering so much damage, Tanjiro returns home to his father to deliver the heartbreaking news about his mother's death. After all that, Tanjiro sets out to live a normal life to honor his mother's sacrifice. Due to his demon blood, he may very well be present in the future. Make sure to subscribe and like for more videos like this one.